Ian Waltz, who is here to share discus and shot put skills. This is the first of three breakout sessions with Ian, with additional sessions at 12.33 p.m. and 1.20 p.m. Mountain Time. That last, last session will be a question and answer format with Ian Waltz and Stacy Verdila. We will be collecting questions for the 1.20 p.m. question and answer session using the chat function, but we will not present questions until the third session. Now we'll turn the time over to Ian. All right. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. Everybody see me okay? All right, Greg, can you hear me okay? Yeah, got you loud and clear. Right on. Well, thanks for being here. Um, this is a first for me doing a virtual clinic. Uh, as you know, throwing is very technical. And uh, so I'll do my best to uh, do my PowerPoint, but I also believe that we're all visual learners. So I'm probably going to go back and forth between the PowerPoint and actually demonstrate them. And I'm set up out here in my shop. And uh, I'll do my best to demonstrate any drills uh, or any technical aspects. Um, I think because there's so few of us on here that along the way, if any coaches or athletes have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and throw those in the chat box and I can explain the best I can. Um, so let me try to uh, share my screen here and get my PowerPoint started. All right. So this first session, I'm going to do fundamentals of discus throwing um, for Simplot Games at Virtual Clinic 2021. So kind of my motto throughout training, uh, I wasn't the tallest guy, wasn't the biggest guy, but um, I believed in working hard. Um, so just my motto throughout my career and life in general is uh, work harder than everyone else, and you will su be successful and make it to the top. And I think that goes for any sport or any career out there. Um, wasn't the most talented person, but I spent the extra time in the weight room, throwing, whatever it may be. And, and I truly believe that, that that helped me in my endeavors and to be successful in, in whatever I put my mind to. Uh, just a couple other stats. Um, because we don't have a ton of time, I won't tell my whole story, but uh, I grew up in Idaho, um, had a fantastic coach. Uh, basically my freshman year of high school, uh, I was walking down the hallway and the throws coach came up to me and said, hey, you should try to come out for track. I'm like, sweet, I'm a big guy, I'll come out and go for it. Um, so basically, I was really blessed to have a great high school coach. Uh, believe it or not, my freshman year, I didn't even like the discus. And I think my last meet of the year, uh, I did a full spin and threw 118 feet, which, as you guys know, isn't super far. But uh, just kept training hard. Uh, high school coach that really stayed with me. Uh, after everybody else would go home, I would stay another hour, hour and a half training with him and uh, really kind of built the foundation of, of what my career would, would take me. Um, yeah. So I have Idaho state record in the discus still uh, 204 feet uh, from 1995. That might date me a little bit, but uh, anyways, went to uh, Washington state, uh, had a good career there, uh, broke school record there. Um, and then in 2004, uh, I moved down to the Olympic training center in San Diego and I uh, was able to make my first Olympic team. Uh, kind of backtracking, uh, going back to John's story and just kind of perseverance. Uh, my junior year of college, I threw uh, 211 feet, five inches, and I didn't make an Olympic team till 2004. So I had um, basically six years of my career where I didn't PR in the discus. Um, it was frustrating at times. There was a couple injuries, but, but I had that goal of making that Olympic team. And it uh, just goes to show that in the right situation um, and hard work, you can uh, accomplish those goals. So, um, yeah, I made a couple Olympic teams, uh, a bunch of world championship teams. And the best part was I was able to meet Stacy in Helsinki. Uh, and I guess the rest is history for that. But 
Uh, shot put wise, yeah, I was a glide shot putter in high school, uh, threw 63 feet and then dabbled with the spin a little bit. And uh, after college, I ended up throwing 66, which is okay, but not great per American standards. So just a little bit about, about me and uh, my career. So getting to discus fundamentals, uh, I always thought discus like a dance move. Uh, you see a really smooth, good dancer, and that's that's what I kind of relate uh, discus throwing to. We have to think about posture, rhythm, and balance. Uh, when you think about discus throwing, we're really torqued up. It's a smooth move. We don't want to be herky-jerky. And when you think about the physics of it, we want to have a neutral center posture and then a wide loose arm out here because we want to get the most physics or release velocity off that discus so just having a good posture balance and rhythm and one of the all-time greats is Vigilius Elekna and uh, I just want to throw uh show this video of him uh just look at kind of his posture rhythm and balance throughout this throw We'll just watch it one more time and just just kind of watch watch those three things that I was talking about. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, sorry. First thing I want to talk about is posture. So in, in any athletic event, we have good posture. We call it the athletic stance. So we have our neutral spine, head up, eyes on the horizon, level shoulders, arm locked back, and our hips back, getting ready for our explosive movement. So this, this plays into discus throwing also, because we want to create those forces from the ground up. We want to be in a balanced position uh, just like getting underneath a squat bar, running, jumping, we're all we're always in this athletic position. It's the most powerful, it's the most explosive, and that's how we generate power. This is really weird not having any interaction, so bear with me. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the standing throw. So we have, we want to start out with an athletic stance. Hey, can you, can you guys see me and the screen at the same time? Maybe put it in the chat. Yeah, you're a little in the corner, the right corner, or wherever you okay. put it. Like I said, it's, it's hard to do, um, hard to explain things, right? Can you see my feet at all here? No? I'll just play this video first and then uh, then I can talk about it. So basically stand and throw. We want, a, we want a nice athletic stance like I showed in that previous slide. So the biggest thing is have a uh, heel-toe relationship. So sorry, I'm going to tailor all this to a, a right-handed thrower. We want to set up sh feet shoulder width apart. Basically, we're going to have our right. If we had a line down the middle of our body on the ground, we're going to have our right heel on the line and our left toe. So basically, the reason why we split our legs is as we turn, we need to still have good balance and a good base. So we set up right heel, left toe relationship. Next thing we want to do is just set, set the depth in your legs. So we want to really be down in a quarter to half squat position so we can have power in our legs. And then we have the path of the discus as we're winding up. Let me grab one real quick. Just to back up really quick, uh, if you guys can see me, uh, I got one of my old discs here. Uh, I think grip, grip is really important in the disc. What I used to do, I used to split straight down the middle with my hand and then have my first two fingers together and then spread the next two fingers apart. And they're in the crease right there, your fingers. I know a lot of people like to palm it, uh, beginners like to palm it, but uh, once we get all that force on that discus, we need to have our first two fingers together, the second two spread apart, and then our thumb just lightly on the discus. 
So we have heel toe relationship. We set the depth in our legs and then we have path of the discus. Uh, I'm going to step back here on my weight room platform and let me know if you guys can see me. Okay. Is that too far away? Yeah. It is. All right. So basically we have heel toe relationship. We're going to set the depth in our legs and the path of the discus is really important on our wind up. I guess you get half of my body. So we take the disc in our left hand. We need that centrifugal force. So we're going to wind up here and the path of the discus is going to come low. I like to teach and what I did is almost feel like you're scraping your fingers on the ground at the bottom of your um, orbit. Okay, so I'm here. Once my discus hits my low point here, this is when I'm setting the depth in my legs. So I come here and I set the depth in my right leg. Does that make sense? Start here, feet shoulder width apart, heel toe relationship, setting the depth of my legs with this low point here. And then I'm locking the upper body in here on the wind up. And at the end of my wind up, I really like to teach extending the left arm out and locking it in, and then locking the right arm in with kind of your trap and your shoulder blade area. So that part is locked in. So now that I'm set there, I need to make sure all the weight is over my right toe. So in order to turn, in order to turn, I have to have my weight directly over that foot. So I want all the weight on the ball of my right foot. And when I look down, you wanna have your knee out over your toe. And the knee out over your toe basically pushes my hips forward. When we wind up, you don't want your glutes sticking out and your hips back. We want our hips forward, sucked up underneath us. That will allow us to turn easier and keep our upper body in a nice neutral position. Uh, another thing is just keeping your feet at 90 degrees to your body. If I wind up and I let my feet turn all the way towards the back of the circle, that's a long ways for your feet to turn to get your hips facing the front of the ring and you'll end up uh, throwing with all upper body and not using your legs. So in the standing throw, we want to initiate the movement from the ground up. So once we wind up, and I'll show a video of Casey Malone here. So once we wind up, made a few teams with this guy, great guy. So watch how he winds up. See, he initiates the throw from the ground up there. So you're going to see the wind up. Set the depth in the legs. He's a little bit taller. And see how active his right foot is. That's where all our power needs to start from. Turn the right knee, throw the hips all the way forward and strike across our chest. Once again, this is really hard, but there's no interaction and in, in actually helping people uh, get in the right positions. So if you have any uh, questions, just put it in the chat. So just to quickly run through, sorry. Sorry about that. So basically to go back through heel toe relationship, athletic stance, depth in the legs, we have our wind up and then we're initiating the throw with the lower body. We wanna create all the tension and elasticity in our body so we can get the most out of our full throws. All right. On to my next slide here. All right, so now I'm gonna start at the back of the ring. So the wind up. So we're gonna start now just running through the full throw uh, 
standing throws down. So now we're going to start with a wind up, which is the initial starting point of our full throw in the discus. So once again, feet are going to be shoulder width apart. So one of the biggest I th things I see with beginners is, is out of the back, right? A lot of people throw their left arm too early. They don't initiate with the feet. So basically, uh, our end goal is to be balanced over that left side. I'm going to kind of point you down at my feet. Scoot my computer out a little bit. All right. Is that okay? Yep. So basically, feet are shoulder width apart. So I'm a right-hander. So we're here, athletic stance, depth in the legs. And as I wind up, just watch my feet. My left foot is going to turn in. My right foot is going to stay put. And basically, I am going to come back where all my weight is on my left glute. And a drill I like to do is almost pick up this right foot, and that shows us that we're in a balanced position. So this is just a nice, easy way. I threw it this way. A lot of high schoolers and beginners, when they wind up, they want to come clear over here on this right foot. What happens is, as we go to initiate the turn, we're going to fall in the middle of the ring. So our, our goal in the back around the corner is to be balanced over this left side. So once again, I'm here. I'm going to turn the left foot in. I'm going to push back off my right heel. And here's my starting position. So I'll kind of point to the upper body here. So as I do that, you don't want to sacrifice more windup for turning the right foot more. So if I wind up here, wherever my body stops is where my starting position is going to be. I don't want to sacrifice turning my feet even more for more windup because that's not going to do me any good. All right. I'll show you the starting position one more time. So we're here, we're gonna wind up. Left foot pivots in, I'm pushing back off the right heel. And now I'm ready to go. Head up, head is up, eyes are on the horizon. My arms are locked. Arms are locked into place here. So once I lock this in out of the back, I'm pushing my left arm out. I'm locking the right hand back. Discus is behind the hip. So that's my initial wind up position. So I, this is the best starting position because our ultimate goal is to be balanced over the left foot. I really apologize that I can't get my whole body in here. All right, on to the next slide. So technical issues out of the back. So one of the biggest things is after our wind up, we need momentum to get going through the ring. So a lot of beginners initiate that with the upper body. So they wind up and then they fling the left arm to get the momentum out of the back. That's not what we wanna do. So we're here, we're set up properly there. We have to initiate movement from the lower body. So the first thing I wanna do is open up my left foot. So I'm here, I'm winding up. First thing I want to do is open this left foot. This is how we're initiating the throw right here. So we're opening up the left side of the body. We're getting transferring all that weight onto the left leg. Left arm is behind the left leg here. This is this is our initial movement. So we're here. That's that's the only movement we're going to be doing out of the back so we can be balanced and initiate the throw. We really need to control our left side. As soon as we throw the left arm, our upper body is ahead of the lower body and we won't have any torque. All right, I'll show you just a little, uh, this is my PR in Salinas. I'm old, so this video is old. <laughs> you can kind of see my wind up there. Nice big long arms. 
I'm locking everything in place. Initiate the throw with the left side, as you can see there. So opening the left, arms are nice and long, trying to get that balanced position over the left side. And with a lot of beginners, you'll, you'll see this left hip start to collapse. So that's what we want. So around the corner, we wanna have this nice balanced position. You see the good shin angle, head and chest are up and an active right side. In my next slide here. All right, so once around the corner, we have our drive phase. This is a video of Gerd Cantor. I trained with him uh, down in San Diego, uh, Olympic gold in 2008. So we can watch him being balanced out of the back and then the drive phase, uh, I'll explain it more here in a minute, but just kind of watch this video. Watch him set up, watch him open the left side and then work his right leg around the back. Nice win to get from. All right. So basically we have our wind up. We're gonna open up that left leg left arm stays behind the left leg. We wanna get in this balanced position. Once we're here, we're gonna go ahead and start activating our right foot. So we're gonna call this the sweep. So basically, if we're in a balanced position on the left side, we're not in any hurry, we're not falling into the middle of the ring, so we can stay here all day long if we want. So once we're balanced on this left side, it gives me a chance to really use my right side. This is kind of our motor right here. So this is gonna give us our adduction and it's gonna give us part of our drive across the ring. So we're here, wind up, open the left here. We're kicking our right out, we're in a balanced position. So I'm around the corner now, so now we get into our drive phase. If we think about, if we think about the discus, everybody, kind of ties it to more of a rotational event, but it's really, it's really a linear event. Ultimately, we want the discus to go out into the sector as far as possible. So if you think about it, we have, we wind up opening the left. So we, we're thinking linear here, and then we have a little rotation here. And then this is where all our power comes from is this drive phase here. So that's our biggest chance to get to cross the ring. My goal was when I was throwing is to get six inches past the middle of the ring. So that, that really showed that you're driving and to be able to hit the drive phase well, you have to be balanced out of the back. Because if you're falling, your body always wants to be in a um, neutral position. So um, we just have to make sure we're balanced so we can get that drive phase. So we come around the corner, we're in a balanced position. And once that left foot is, is facing down the middle of the sector is when we need to push or we call it our drive phase. This isn't a short push. It's a nice long full extension of the left leg. So if I'm here, I'm around the corner here. I guess I'll face you guys. I want a full, I want a full extension. It's a long push fully extend the leg, push down the middle of the sector. You don't want to push too early. you will go off to the right. If you push too late and your, your foot rotates towards that left sector, you're going to be off balance when you hit the middle and your left foot will be in the bucket. So the drive phase is here. It's like you're, you're in the starting blocks and you're driving out, right? We're here and we're coming out low and we're driving out. That's a very important push. In order to do that, we have to be balanced. So it's a full extension of the left leg. As the left leg is fully pushing, my right, my right foot is adducting around the back here. 
So it's low position. As soon as that starts to come up to get us across the ring, we're doing a full extension of the left side. And as we do that, we wanna make sure and hold this left side because as we come around the corner, if our left arm does that, I'm not gonna be able to drive because we have all this rotation going on. You need to have your eyes and chest forward for a split second as we drive down the ring. Like I said before, the goal is to get six inches past that middle. So we want the distance to go out into the sector as far as possible. Um, then level shoulders and then a right leg sweep. All right, now let's talk about the transition to the center of the ring. So there's my drive phase there. Shoulders are level. Look at that nice shin angle I have down below. And then we have the right leg sweep. So watch my left leg as it extends out all the way. And then my right leg will come low to a high position. So full, watch full extension of my left leg. And then at that point, I like to teach. We don't want to push in a flat horizontal plane. We want to push up. My thought process was I'm going to push up at a 45 degree angle. So if you think about all the vectors and the angles, we have a hard drive face, but we need time to get your hips switched in the air to get in that power position. So we have our hard drive phase. We have a right leg sweeping around and up and I need to drive up at that 45 degree angle. And I need, I call that the air time. So I need air time to get my hips switched in the middle. So I call it hip crack. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but just the hip crack. So if I'm standing here, we come around and we have this hip crack here. I need time in the air in order for my feet to get turned and land in that power position. That's very important because if I, if I'm coming out of the ground, out of the back, if I drive and step right away, my feet have a long ways to turn. So if I drive here, if I drive hard and step right away, my foot almost has 360 degrees to turn. But if I can come around here like this and crack, crack my hip and get my right foot around further, then when I hit the middle, I have less time to turn and I won't have to wait to deliver that discus. So we have our 45 degree push off the left leg and then just the timing of that push and bringing that right leg around. Uh, talk about focal points. Um, you have to remember wherever our head goes, our body will go also. So don't be looking down at your feet. Eyes are up on the horizon so we can keep our upper body back. So let's just kind of watch the path of the right leg, the push, and then watch that right foot turn in the air right there and get down. And once we land in that position, then the right foot has to keep moving because we have to keep all that tension and elasticity in our body. All right, let's talk about the delivery. So when we, we get to our stand and throw position or our power position, we've created all this power, uh, tension, elasticity in our body, and now we got to keep it. So um, with a lot of beginners, we, wanna, we think, man, we want to throw this discus right away, so we go straight to our arm. We've created all these, these rotational and directional tensions in our body and we need to time that up accordingly. So we're here, when I, when I looked at all my video, when I was training, when I landed in the middle, I wanted to see that discus behind my hip and hide. I knew that was a great, um, a great position to be in because I had lots of stretch and lots of force. So we land in the middle, I would wait for my left foot to hit down. As soon as my left foot hit down, I would turn my right foot and create all this tension throughout my hips and through my obliques and ultimately through my chest. 
So when we hit the middle here, we have all those forces. We have all that linear push. I need to have a solid block leg on my left side, just like a car running into a wall, right? We have all that forces we want to stop. And then the upper body basically has that much more speed and power throughout the throw. So we land in our power or our standing throw position. Discus is behind the hip. As we're here, we're still holding that upper body back. When that left hits, we don't want to let the upper body, you know, get soft here. We need to be tight through the oblique. So we're here. We're going to initiate the throw with our right foot just to keep that lower body ahead of our upper body. So we're initiating the throw from the ground up. I like to pick a spot on the back of the cage. I would give it a quick peek with my eyes. Because remember, wherever our head goes, our body will follow. So if I hit my power position and my head goes here right away, my upper body is going to follow. So looking back, get the right foot going, stretch that left arm out, get the hips cleared all the way to the front of the throwing area. Hips are clear here. I ought to have my finished position here. And then the last thing I want to do is block on my left leg. So I climb up on top of my left leg. I got all this tension here in my, my discus arm. I'm gonna block the left side and then I'm striking through. All right, so I got five minutes left. So uh, once again, I'm talking about beginners, but there's a lot of orbit issues with the discus. Um, the biggest thing that I see is the lack of turning with the feet causes your discus to drop, right? Centrifugal force. If I'm here, my hand's out, I'm spinning around and I stop, that discus is going to drop. So I always like to keep that 90 degrees to the body here. So I'm here, keep that thing as far away as possible here. So we have the most tension and the biggest, or the longest lever arm here. So just make sure when your kid's, or winding up and they're throwing, you'll see a lot of scooping going on. And that's a product of not moving the feet. So we got to always use the term, put your brain in your feet, because that's where everything starts. Um, we're all human and we just want to throw with our upper body, right? But those are a lot smaller muscles and the discus won't go as, as far. Um, other issues is over rotation out of the back due to um, the left the left arm or the upper body leading into the throw. So basically, like I said earlier, we wind up. All right, we need to get momentum to go through the ring. So basically, we're flinging our left arm, our upper body is ahead of our lower body, and that creates problems. We, we drive to the left side of the ring, we're off balance here, and we don't have any um, torque in our body. And the last thing is just delivering early with the arm. So we just gotta make sure when we hit the middle of the ring, we got to keep that tension and use our lower body to um, initiate the throw. So just going back to the beginning, you know, we need to be relaxed for the shoulders and traps. You should feel nice, loose arms with this implement in your hand. You should feel separation and elasticity. And we want to make sure our upper body's in that neutral position with this long lever out here. I'm just going to show this video here. This is Lars Riedel. Just kind of look at the whippiness in his arm and how he sets up the positions and the timing of it. So you really have to be patient with that lower body to initiate the throw with the lower body, create those tensions coming up through your knee, your hip, your obliques, and eventually all that tension comes out through your arm, just like stretching a rubber band as long as you can. And at the end, you're just letting it go. So just some drills, uh, wind up, initiating throw. Uh, broomsticks are pretty common, but this just helps keep your shoulders level. Here, here, keeps everything together. So we have quarter turns, half turns, and 360s. So this is a good way to initiate that throw out of the back keeping our eyes up on the horizon. This is a 360 degree discus drill around a cone with a stick on our shoulders. The two things that we're focusing on. So the biggest thing on these quarter turns, half turns and 360s 
is just initiating that throw and getting the habit of basically most coming from that left foot. If we don't initiate these turns from the left, the left foot, we're just going to fall. If we're, if we're lazy, if we're here, we just go straight to the upper body. We're not going to be able to turn. As I come here, this is the motion we want there. That's initiating the turn out of the back. And for this drill, we want to really initiate being balanced. This is our first motion here. Gets the body, uh, lower body ahead of the upper body. And then we can just be balanced as we work our right leg around the back.